Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. And I'm back again with the next lesson in our Learn Scratch tutorial series. And in this lesson, we're going to start the first of a multi-part series on outputting. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Kev, that's a bit of a jump. We pretty much just went from talking about importing and a couple other techniques to immediately talking about outputting. It seems like a bit of a jump, but if you think about it, it's actually not. Really, when you sit down in front of a nonlinear editing application, it's essential that you know two things. One, how to get media in, and the other, how to get media out. And then somewhere in between those two lessons, you're going to be playing around, you're going to be putting effects on, you're going to be you know, creating multiple video layers, etc., etc. And really the two most important things, the first one we've covered, importing, the second one, outputting, we're going to cover right now. So this way, once we have that out of the way, you'll be set to go and start to play around as we continue on with our lessons and not have to worry about how you're going to get your timelines out of scratch if you need to send them to a client. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch. We have a timeline in front of us with some clips on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to head on down to the render module. Now you will notice in front of you that we have a node that has a publish button above it and a report button below it. We're actually going to ignore those for the next couple lessons. And I wanna focus on the node that we see directly in front of us, the one that says card one and has a blue screen on it. Now we actually have multiple timelines here if we're looking at this from a dailies workflow. If you wanna see exactly what timelines we're going to be outputting, we can do it one of two ways. We can come back to the construct module, we can head on over here to the left, and we can see the different timelines that we have set up. But if we come back to the render module here, we actually have access to the exact same project window right here on the left-hand side so that we can get access to those four timelines with the click of a mouse. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily have to have the same output tree for each one of those cards. Maybe you're making dailies for cards one and two, but the client just wants to see cards three and four. So this is where we can get in and start setting up multiple different outputs at the same time based on the client's needs. Now let's just hide this out of the way because I don't want to have too many windows here because I don't want things to get too confusing. Now you have had a little bit of an introduction to the render module because we have talked about how to get in and to change our project settings or more specifically our timeline settings, not our project settings. Now if you take a look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see that we can see that this timeline is 1920 by 1080, 2398 frames per second, and we are looking at the card one sequence. I know that we're looking at it because it tells us there. It also tells us in the lower left hand corner of the node that we have right here. And we can see it selected over here in the project dropdown. Now, if I select card two, you'll notice that it updates immediately here as well as in the lower right hand corner. Now, let's talk a little bit about what's going on at the bottom of the screen. Now, really, there's one thing that I want to focus on specifically in this lesson, and that is our output templates. Now, you'll notice that when we called up the render module, that nothing was here. It's literally the node for the timeline, and that's it. Well, the reason that that's it is because I actually intentionally set this project not to have an output template set to go when we came into the project. Now, if we wanted to get in with a project and set a default output module or output template, I'm just going to close the project for one second. We can come into our project settings and you'll actually find it right here at the bottom center of the project settings window. Now, what's important to keep in mind about these templates is, is that they're really just a starting point. And what's also important to keep in mind is that based on the project that you're working on, these output templates could very well change based on what you need to do, whether it's a dailies output, whether it's just viewing clips with burn-in time code that you need to see. So if you want to get in and set this from here, that's fine. But for me personally, I normally leave this set as none because I normally just like to tell Scratch in the render module what type of output template I'd like to have it give me. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to step back into the project. I'm going to head back to the render module. Now, just to sort of take a little bit of a sidestep for one second, you'll notice that we have some other information over here, such as output settings, format settings, post render, etc, etc. Don't worry. We're going to get to that in just a second. 
But before we even do that, we need to see exactly what an output tree looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over here to the template drop down. You'll notice that we have a few different options in here and to keep things fairly simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and select a ProRes 422 HQ dailies output. What I'm now going to do is I'm simply going to say apply. Once I've applied that, I'm just going to pan over here just a little bit. This is a basic output tree for a ProRes 422 HQ dailies workflow. So let's take a look at the process here and how we're going to do this is we're simply going to go from node to node. Keep in mind the starting point is always the timeline that we currently have selected, which in this case is card one. What's going to happen with card one is it's immediately going to get some burn in applied to it. And then we're going to branch off into two different workflows. We're going to get a ProRes HQ file of whatever is being processed, which in this case, because it's a dailies workflow, it will be output on a clip by clip basis. In the other branch, what's going to happen is the clip is going to be reframed down to 720p. It's going to have a watermark added to it and it's going to be turned into an MP4 file. So the burn in is actually the same on both the low res version and the high res version. It's just the low res version is going to get a watermark and be turned into an MP4 file. Chances are we'll be uploading this to a dailies platform like Copra or even Pix. And this file is what we're going to be sending to the post house. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to come back here. We're just going to delete all those nodes because I'm going to show you a slightly different workflow here, which is another common one when working in Scratch, which is our Avid Dailies workflow. Now, you'll notice we have an extra node over here on the, basically, I'll call it the high res version. <laughs> I call it the high res version, even though it is DNX HD 36. But what's important to keep in mind is that it is going to be an HD file, 1920 by 1080, whereas the file on the top branch is only going to be 720. But you'll notice the process is very similar. Burden time codes the same for both branches, then 720p, watermark added, MP4 file. In this case, assuming that we're coming from a larger than HD format, the larger than HD file will have burden added to it. It'll be reframed to HD and then compressed in DNX HD 36. So as you can see, the output trees are not very daunting. If you take a look at exactly what they are doing at each step of the process, you can follow along fairly simply and fairly straightforward. Now I did mention before, we are working with card one. If I come back to the left here, let's select card two. What I'm going to do with card two is with that timeline selected, I'm going to come down here and set up a Copra H264 dailies workflow. Let's just pan our window over here a little bit for card three. Let's do a PIX H264 dailies workflow. And just for kicks for card four, we're going to come down and let's actually not do that. I just clicked that by accident here. Let's come down and let's do an Avid dailies work. Actually, we'll do a ProRes HQ dailies workflow. Why? Because the very first timeline I had has an Avid workflow. So what's important to keep in mind now is that we essentially have four different outputs happening now with the four different timelines. And if we wanted to get in and add any of these to the render queue, all we need to do with each one of these timelines is first make sure we select the node that we want to output. In this case, it's going to be that video node, the MP4, the DNX HD 36, then simply say add to queue. They'll be added to the render queue and ready to output. Now I have another lesson in between here and talking about the render queue because it's important for me to get in and talk about what these nodes actually do, how you're going to apply them and how you're going to get in and work with multiple branches to get the type of output you need every time. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson because in our next lesson, we're going to get in and create our own output tree. And we're going to focus really on three types of nodes. One is going to be a transform node. One is going to be a burn in node. And the other is going to be a node that's going to let us actually create a clip of video because believe it or not, up until this point, we would only be exporting image sequences. So that node is exceptionally important for whether it's a dailies workflow or a finishing workflow. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, 
you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.